Hey guys, welcome back to Be Rich. Before we get into the video, I wanted to bring to your notice that my uncles Vinod Srinivasan, Anand Srinivasan and I have rolled out a Substack, which is basically a blog slash newsletter where we're going to post our original research onto it. And we've analyzed macroeconomic trends. And a lot of you know, my uncle Anand Srinivasan and I regularly write for the Hindu. And these articles are also going to be made available for you in the Substack. The link is moat moat investing dot substack dot com you'll find it in the description and in the video right now um we hope you go check it out we've put a lot of time and effort into it and please give us comments and feedback on what you read thank you hey guys welcome back to be rich good evening to you and we're happy to have you back on the channel so political developments everywhere our elections had just elapsed we saw the markets go through a swing of going down and then up and the UK elections had happened and France called a snap election where Marie Le Pen made some uh, grounds except she didn't get enough of a majority to form the government. So a lot of political turmoil over there. And the US is now the next contender in the list of countries going to the polling booth this year. And the US is arguably the most important one out of all of these. Although I will say that India, France are also quite important. But um, now the U.S. is there uh, to vote. And the important thing to note is that it's undeniable that an election basically means that it's going to set the course for how the market is going to progress in the next few years. It's undeniable. And it is true that fiscal policy is one of the biggest contributors to how your investments pan out in the future. And you saw that happen in the Indian budget itself. Forget the elections. Post-elections. On the day of the budget, as our finance minister was laying out her plans, you saw the market reacting violently. It immediately dropped when she announced a 6% discount on gold imports. And uh, immediately gold took a beating and gold-related stocks took a beating. And the broader market also took a beating when she started talking about not allowing indexation anymore in real estate. And a slab, assets and all non-assets, short-term gains and capital gains and long-term capital gains when she spoke about that. Immediately, the market reacted and swung wildly downwards and then it was pulled back up and the next following day it went down and today I think it's kind of marginally gone up again. Yeah. So this is how politicians' words carry weightage in the market because end of the day, it's all about money, especially when the finance minister talks, things can sway. Right. So before we get into that, I want to talk about what are some possible uh, ideas which people may have about upcoming election and the one we had before and why people might be tempted to actually bet on it and decide to, you know, go long on, a, on something or go short on something. So uh, first, let's talk about the prospect of the US election. Uh, the, the biggest prospect is that, look, when Biden watched the debate, the first debate, uh, presidential debate between Biden and Trump, he didn't perform so well. I'd say I'd venture to say both candidates didn't perform very well, but one performed remarkably worse than the other. And the market picked up on that. And we saw people betting on the fact that interest rates were going to go up in the future because inflation was going to come up because uh, deficits were going to rise, uh, supposedly, if Trump came into power because he's going to give corporates a, a payday by cutting taxes as well as wealthy individuals by cutting uh, income taxes for them. You see, this is where I have a slight issue yeah. with this because the way the American government is set up, no individual person can do anything. It has to be a very collective effort. Right. And that too, it has to work on three branches of the government. In US, the way their democracy is set up, it's very rigid in the terms of it has to move in a certain process and a bill cannot just be pushed by the president. He cannot just veto something or, you know, as they say in these media clips, they make it sound as if like he can just sign things into, he'll do this, he can do that. It's very difficult for the president to do anything like that. The institutions are very strong and you have the house, you have the Senate and you have the president. You have three branches and all three have to work in tandem for things to happen. Former president becomes President Trump again, second term around, or Kamala Harris manages to win if she becomes a nominee and she wins. Changing course correction all on paper is very nice, but she has to work with the, or he has to work with the Senate, he has to work with the House, or she has to work with the House and cajole and move. And that's where you see the famous American bills getting poked up, as they say. It gets padded up. It'll be a bill for allowing let's say 
forest uh, thing to be expanded but on that same bill they'll slap on lots of things lots mm -hmm. of goodies for each one yeah each guy will get a stab at it and we'll find all kinds of strange things being mm -hmm. yeah. tied together and made into a bill and shoved so keep that in mind sort of frankenstein's monster type correct yeah. so yes i do understand it makes a lot of you know for media for the talking about trump's policies and you know trump's policies and versus camilla's policies the democrats versus the republicans even trump he was in power he really could not do all what he wanted to do mm. as vacancies opened in the supreme court the most he could do was put his candidate forward yeah and his fellow friends who were there in the senate helped those candidates get approved yeah because the democrats did not have majority by yeah. by chance if democrats had majority then they would have been all these candidates would have been squashed and the important thing here is to get your own people behind your uh, b behind your idea because Correct. it's very possible that the republicans or the democrats can just decide to not vote in favor of what what you want to push in it's something which you have to really work on all the big wigs in your party because in india we have something known as the party whip where you're forced to you you have to put your weight behind what your party wants to push forth however in the us is a it's a little more complicated it's not as simple as the indian election no uh, indian legislation system where you can just push anything you want as long as no, you have you the can't. majority no you can't and there in the us each congressman each senator comes from a certain area and those people have voted him and sent him as their representative he is not a representative of you know a state or a part of a district he has a very specific base which has sent him to do their work and their bidding and he is answerable to them not even to his party leader or the president he first answers to them and mind you that is the where the problem lies for the president any president in the us if he tries to push through something he has to work and cajole with each every vote because he, each vote he has to convince and convert them into a yes or a no of whatever he wants and that's the way it works in the us and it's great but it also gives you confidence as an investor that things are not just not going to happen willy nilly as the president says you know i'm going to like hurt china i'm going to like mm -hmm. you know do this to china i'm going to do that here even foreign policies he cannot upend and do whatever he feels like doing he can't even you know move anything without approval of the congress and the senate and if he does try to do it he can get thrown out of his job i know that sounds as crazy as it sounds it's very much possible of course they did try to impeach presidents in the past some have been successful some were not successful donald trump was successfully impeached yes but by the time it was all over and done yeah so anyway keep this in mind as we discuss this trump's policies this markets don't put too much weightage especially the american market it's not like the indian market in the indian market like how you saw the finance minister coming and breathing the budget market started immediately shifting and moving in the us the movements may not be so stark and immediate but we far more subtle and you have to really learn how to read the lines properly in between the lines especially before you can see those kind of reactions so that's that's the thing so a clear case everyone was talking about the trump trade they said that look it's clear that inflation is going to go up if trump comes to power there was a lull between the debate and biden saying that he was going to continue running and people said look biden if he continues and at one point biden said no matter come what may i am going to stay in the race and people took that as a clear signal that it was going to be biden versus trump in the final uh, leg of the race because it's just 3 months left for a uh, for the election True. and it's a very short period of time for to, for them to field a new candidate and then put them into power and letting biden making biden relinquish his you know claim over nomination so people put, uh, if you had on the uh, day of the debate at the night when you saw the presidential debate you saw how joe biden uh, had cognitive decline compared to donald trump and you said okay i'm going to put my weight behind the trump trade i'm going to say that i'm going to short treasuries or if i own treasuries i'm going to sell them off now and buy them back later when yields go up because interest rates are going to be up in the future so i'm going to make some money in that arbitrage there have been a lot of people who did that yes and interest rate so interestingly the interest rate yield did uh, go up on bonds by 0.2% however as soon as the inflation data which came saying that in inflation came down to 3% yields yeah. Uh, yeah yields came back down because everyone expected a rate cut in the future yeah. and 
inflation seemed to be under Correct. Control. Certainly politics wasn't important anymore. Yeah. So it, it's it's so difficult to keep track of what will cause what. And even if you can successfully predict a Trump election, it's almost impossible to really figure out whether the market is going to move the way you want to because some absolutely right some yield spread could increase some yield spread could come down uh, you know other news where japan has now started buying up yen in the public market and they're pushing their interest rates up you i mean anything can like top anything can yes send the market in a tailspin and that's what black swan events are yeah because they are events you cannot see even i i'm saying forget black swan i'm saying think of the white swan <laughs> most for any swan yeah any swan we people people don't realize that even if you can success most people successfully predicted the fact that modi would come into power yes. regardless of whether he was going to come in 400 plus or 370 plus whatever the number was whatever the number was people knew that look he has a strong enough voter base and he will claw his way back to power but what were the actionable steps most people thought that if you bought into the stock market indian stock market the stock market obviously loves um uh, stability so if you have continuity most people expected the markets to do well and they bought in but on the day of the election modi did come to power modi still has narendra modi our honorable prime minister still has power bjp has a strong hold over power however on the day of the election uh, results the market dropped by 6% true no, and this is even after you had predicted the outcome correctly you did not predict what how the market would react correctly that's because that's a problem in the indian market is there's so much of foreign investing in the indian market and they hold such sway and they are very not cued into indian politics they completely rely on so called advisors and third advisor fourth advisor and nervousness in their room comes very fast and thick so in that room gets you know it's like sending a cat amongst the pigeons it happens they really get spooked and they started really dropping everything and running right and now let's take the opposite case right 6% the market has dropped you see that there's a coalition government now there's talk of how two or three people can flip over and the government is very weak and so on and so forth about a month into you know past the election date things have remained quite stable and the markets have come back from where they were before true and to the people who suddenly thought thought that was a sell call and started selling in droves thinking that look it's going to be a lot of turmoil especially after rahul gandhi's first speech many people thought that look the opposition is quite strong and karge is uh, the president of congress is going and meeting the people who were supposedly supposed to flip and he went to their party office and met them and that news could have been interpreted as there's uh, going to be a hung parliament true and they wanted to sell but then immediately we see that the market has now suddenly recovered and everyone seems to be happy with it so it's almost impossible to figure out the first step right which is knowing what is going to happen is already like impossible almost impossible at least it seems impossible to me because i lack the acumen to be able to but see this is a basic problem with trading this yeah. is why trading is pretty much like gambling for this exact reason because there's no science behind it it's purely like trying to read someone's emotion by looking across the room yeah you look at someone sitting and talking on the phone and you try and look at his face and read his face and why he's making those expressions and based on that decide to buy and sell something it's absolutely true this is why warren buffett says trading is crazy and the two future options is a weapons of mass destruction for the simple reason of this because it's not science in it there's no nothing in it there's no logic in it there's no nothing in it so it's purely just gambling yeah trying to make a bet on something and it gives you that adrenal rush when you're right and it gives you terrible uh, anxiety when you're wrong yeah. and you can lose your complete wealth in a day in a matter of minutes so why do it yeah and let me put out another case study which we can analyze the ukraine war mm. when uh, there was news in 2021 2022 where russia was uh, you know lining up its uh thanks thanks in the border uh in russia controlled ukraine donbas region Pe- uh russia kept saying look these are military exercises and everyone thought that it was just saber rattling like we didn't think that you know russia was actually going to set foot into another sovereign country but we knew what happened with crimea but we knew that you know ukraine is too big for russia to just swallow up uh whole and if you had made money if you had started buying up russian stocks because they were selling russian stocks and if you started buying russian stocks and to, the next day you find out that putin has officially declared war on ukraine and they've crossed over into ukrainian territory and your stocks tanked that was an unpredictable scenario i mean 
I remember like opening up the opening up Twitter at that point, now X, but Twitter then, and seeing the news of uh, Russian soldiers, you know, crossing over into Ukraine, and I was shocked. I didn't expect it, and it's it's almost unbelievable that it happened. But now, in in hindsight, it looks so. Clear. It's true. The same thing I can talk about is Argentina, for example. Argentina and the countries before the Great Depression was such a robust economy. It was one of the world's largest economies. It was unparalleled to Europe. Many of its so-called rulers, like Spain, it was outperforming Spain and many European countries. And it was giving US a run for its money. Then the Great Depression happened. Then after that, Argentina never came back. Yeah. And no one could have predicted that Argentina would be in the state it is in today, looking at where it was. If you were a time traveler and you were sitting in Argentina, mm -hmm. you know, before the Great Depression, and you said, okay, I'm going to time travel 40 years and see what happens to this country. You you would have no way you would have predicted it. Yeah. And that is a problem. And it can happen to, if it can happen to Argentina, right? Yeah. And if you really study its economy, the way it was to where it went in the short span of time, the way it defaulted, Repeatedly, not once, not twice. I think six or eight times it defaulted. Yeah. No one could have imagined it. And it can happen to a very developed so-called country. It can become underdeveloped in a matter of years, not even decades. Yeah. So you as an investor have to be careful. And trying to look at this news and read, it's very difficult. That's why I'd rather be like Philip Fisher and, you know, pick companies which I understand. Yeah. Under businesses I understand, yeah. something I can look and track it, and I'd rather stay close to my chest, mm. meaning pick mom and pop stores, you know, like he picked Walmart and all, right? Yeah. Something which I can see, instead of going something exotic, the other side of the world, and picking some, you know, even when we say looking at American companies, we're looking at American companies which have a footprint of the world. Like Coca-Cola. Correct. Or Nike. Yeah. We're not looking at some small, uh, you know, uh, bearing ball manufacturer in Illinois mm -hmm. and saying, okay, we will look at it. Because there's no way sitting here this distance. It's not a circle of competence. Correct. Even if you have all the paperwork, you have all the balance sheets mm -hmm. and you know everything about the guy, it's next to impossible to get a feel for it. And to claim that you can say that with confidence, you have to be a much wiser man than anyone I know. Because... I would be very scared to do it. And that's the reverse what happened to for foreign investors in India on the day of elections. Yeah. Because they were promised a phenomenal number for BJP. Yeah. Yes, BJP is in power. Yes, BJP, Manarendra Modi is a prime minister still. But the numbers which they were promised were far away from what actually appeared. And that spooked them. If that number itself is off, then what guarantee is there that other things we thought was sanguine is not. Yeah. So this led to the fracture which we saw happening on that day. Yeah. Now reverse, like you said, now they're all feeling happy again and they're all back, jumped back on board. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like schizophrenia. Yeah. You know, <laughs> do, wait, do you want to be with me or you don't want to be with me? Tell me, are we a couple or not? <laughs> so I get that. But, you know, this is what he famously says. This reaction to the market as an investor, if you stay true to yourself and you do your fundamental research properly and your analysis properly, the underlying security is what you're looking at. You should buy that and invest that and keep on going at a slow pace. When you see the value, keep investing. When the market overprices it, wait. Agreed. I mean, and it's like this. If you're on a road, there's no one else on the road. You're sitting in a car. And if you're going to speed it at 140 kilometers per hour, even a small pebble on the road can knock you off base. But if you're traveling in a car at a pace of about 20, 30 or even 40, even if a big elephant decides to cross your path, you can just hit the brakes. You can so, hit the brake whenever you want to. Yes. And that's why dollar cost averaging or SIPing is such a is such an important facet of investment for retail investors like us because we can't we can't tank a crash into an elephant. We don't have the mechanism for And the it. funny thing is, this kind of dollar costing averaging and sipping is even true for exotic investments. Let's say you suddenly are fascinated in the world of stamps. Yeah. And you want to become a stamp collector. We're a family of stamp collectors, by yes. the way. So that's why I gave this example. Yeah. And you decide to start this budding hobby of yours. You start want to thinking, okay, I can use this as an investment platform. Because if stamps are, there's a small section of society which believes in it and it is an investment for them. You start investing in that. 
I would say it would be crazy of you, even if you've been collecting for a long time, to take a few chunk of your wealth and say, I'll go buy a single stamp. Yeah. I would rather say that you should look at taking the chunk which you want to invest in stamps and break it into smaller pieces and invest in multiple mid-range stamps mm. than to try and take all of it and dump it on one huge Kohinoor diamond Yes. and land yourself into trouble. So this kind of mentality where you stay in your circle of competence and you take it in small steps mm. is far more useful in anything you do, any form of investment, not only in stocks, yeah. in anything, I think holds true. And finally, at the end of the day, why speculate when you don't have to? Yes. When you don't have to, don't. Yeah. Just because you're feeling bored and you want some entertainment, <laughs> don't do it with investment. <laughs> Go find some other hobby. Watch our videos. Yes, watch our videos. I don't know how entertaining and exciting we are, but you can watch our videos. If otherwise, I know, take base jumping. Or stamp collecting. Yeah, stamp collecting. Depending on your choice of poison, you can choose whatever gives you the adrenaline rush, which you so desire. But don't do it with investing. Especially don't do it with money, which is very important for you, which you need for some future plan which you have. Don't sit and gamble with it just because you're feeling bored right now and don't know what to do with yourself. So that's about it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. It's a bit of a longer video, but uh, we had a lot of topics to cover. So we tried our best. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button if you like this video. And if you're not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we drop our videos at the uh, earliest possible time. And finally, if you have any comments, anything you would like to let us know, any suggestions, any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. We'd be more than happy to take a look at what you have See, to say. I don't have my screen in front of me, nor I kept my phone in front of me. Though I use it to research as I'm talking to him, I respect your wish and I don't keep it in front of me when I'm talking to him. There you go. That is proof of pudding for you that we don't... Uh, we read your comments. Yes, we don't disrespect you. Yeah. So, thank you again for joining us on Beach. Thank you. Thank you. I told you about visiting Singapore. The date has been finalized. It's 25th August. It's a Sunday. Those desirous of meeting me in Singapore can drop a message to the WhatsApp number given below or contact my team by an email. My team would reach out to you and we will assure you of our best services. For English and Hindi, there will be a separate meeting. See you in Singapore.